Welcome back to GDT Tech Reviews. In this video we are going to do a detailed review and pick the top 5 best Nikon vlogging cameras, 2022. So let us get started and the review based on our studies and small research. If you have any personal suggestion do let us know in the comment section. If you are for the first time don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon for more videos. We will be also providing affiliates link to purchase from Amazon. Kindly use to for best offers and purchase from anywhere in the world. So let's get started. The Nikon D3500 is a 24 megapixel entry level DSLR with an APS-C CMOS sensor that is cheaper, lighter, and has a longer battery life than the D3400 that it replaced. It was designed with the new photographer in mind and features a guide mode that will essentially teach you how to shoot in various situations. The D3500's guide mode puts it into an easy to use space in the market. This mode makes it easy to tell the camera what kind of scene you are trying to capture and essentially teaches you the basics of photography, such as shutter speed, aperture and exposure compensation along the way. This is a camera that a brand new photographer can pick up and start making decent pictures without a steep learning curve. Face detection AF only works in live view mode, where the rear screen is used to frame up your photo, instead of the viewfinder and although it reacts quickly in sunny conditions, indoors it got laggy seemed to have trouble keeping up. There is no touchscreen functionality on the 921K LCD screen, which can be a little frustrating if you're used to shooting mirrorless or with a phone. Another unfamiliar, but minor, annoyance could be that the optical viewfinder only covers 95% of the frame. It's pretty standard for an entry-level DSLR like this, but means it's hard to precisely judge what is and isn't in the edges of your photo. The Nikon D780 is a 24-megapixel DSLR capable of shooting 12 frames per second in live view and uncropped 4K video at 30fps. It brings many of the newest live view features from the mirrorless Nikon Z6 to a Nikon DSLR for the first time, including on sensor phase detection pixels. As the third in a series of very impressive Nikon DSLRs, specifically, the D700 and D750, Nikon had big shoes to fill with the D780. Both of its predecessors were excellent cameras, and still are great cameras today, even the D700 with just 12 megapixels. Everything on the video side of things is completely new. The D780 shoots very high quality video, oversampled 4K with no crop as well as 1080p video at 120fps. Not to mention 10-bit N-Log capabilities when shooting over HDMI. At the time of this article's publication, the D780 is Nikon's best DSLR for video, though the upcoming D6 is likely to at least match it. Only the Z6 and Z7 mirrorless cameras have slightly better video features overall, thanks to their in-body image stabilization and electronic viewfinder. Beyond the video side of things, you may notice a couple other intriguing specifications in the list above. One of the more notable ones is the shutter speed range, which maxes out at a whopping 900 seconds, 15 minutes. Aside from specialized astrophotography DSLRs, it's simply unheard of to have such long pre-programmed manual shutter speeds. This is an exciting and useful addition on Nikon's part. The Nikon Z9 is a 45.7 MP full-frame Pro Sports mirrorless camera, a high-speed, 8K shooting statement of intent from one of the industry's biggest players. Nikon becomes the third brand to build a pro-grade mirrorless camera around a fast readout, stacked CMOS sensor, and seems determined to show that has no intention of being an also-ran as the market moves to mirrorless. The Z9 is the first camera in this class to abandon the mechanical shutter entirely and, particularly in terms of video, it's by far Nikon's most ambitious camera yet. Nikon had said some time ago that the Z9 would be built around a stacked CMOS sensor, with all the speed benefits that brings for burst rate, readout speed, AF updates and video performance. But that initial reveal didn't make clear how ambitious a sensor it would turn out to be. The sensor delivers the fastest readout rate of any full-frame camera we can think of, resulting in a flash sync of 1 200th of a second, as fast as many mechanical shutters can manage. But, just as excitingly, it has precisely the same pixel count as the sensor used in the Z7 cameras, along with the same base ISO of 64. This makes it likely that the design of the photodiodes themselves is very similar, 
but with more sophisticated readout circuitry. Our early impressions indicate that dynamic range is just under a stop behind the Z72. The Nikon D850 is Nikon's latest high-resolution full-frame DSLR, boasting a 46MP backside illuminated CMOS sensor. But, in a fairly radical departure for the series, it is also one of the company's fastest shooting DSLRs. This combination of properties should significantly widen the camera's appeal to high-end enthusiasts as well as a broad range of professional photographers. The use of a backside illuminated, BSI, sensor means that the light collecting elements of the sensor are closer to the surface of the chip. This should not only increase the efficiency of the sensor, improving low light performance, but should also be expected to make the pixels near the edges of the sensor better able to accept light approaching with high angles of incidence, improving peripheral image quality. The D850 has gained a more usable electronic front curtain shutter option, EFCS, which can now be used quiet shutter modes, as well as live view and mirror up mode. To get the full benefit, though, you need to turn on exposure delay, which has had two sub-second delay settings added. However, exposure delay persists across all shooting modes. Thankfully, and presumably thanks to a redesigned shutter and mirror mechanism, mirror-slash-shutter shock doesn't seem to be much of an issue, even without engaging EFCS. The D850 has no anti-aliasing filter, which should allow for slightly finer detail capture but with added risk of moiré, if any of your lenses are sharp enough to out-resolve a 45.7 MP full-frame sensor. There's still no sign of the clever design Nikon patented so, unlike the Pentax K1 or Sony RX1 or 2, you can't engage an anti-aliasing effect if you do find false color appearing in densely patterned areas. The D850's 45 megapixels allow it to compete directly with the higher pixel counts of the Canon EOS 5 DSR, Fujifilm GFX 50S and Pentax 645Z. The Nikon Z62 is an updated version of the company's 24MP multimedia full-frame mirrorless camera. It gains more processing power to add improved autofocus and a few other tweaks to an already well-rounded feature set. Nikon says the autofocus performance has been incrementally improved over the original Z6, but the most notable feature change is the addition of face and eye detection, both human and animal, to the wide area AF mode. Previously these features were only available in auto area AF, meaning the camera decided where to focus. By adding them to wide area, you are able to narrow down the region in which that camera hunts for faces, giving you a way of pre-selecting the face you wish to focus on. The Z62's maximum burst speed tops out at an impressive 14 frames per second, but only if you use a single AF point and you're willing to shoot JPEGs or take the slight dynamic range hit of shooting 12-bit RAWs. If you want the camera to choose an AF point or track a subject, it shoots at a still very respectable 12 frames per second. The Z62 builds on the Z6's already pretty strong video feature set with the promise of UHD 4K 60p support and a free firmware update due in February 2021. This higher rate footage will come from an APS-C crop of the sensor, and will only be available for internal capture. In addition, the camera's video output options have been expanded, with the Mark II able to output 10-bit HLG HDR footage, in addition to N-Log, to an external recorder. An optional paid upgrade enables a 12-bit line-skipped 4K RAW stream can be sent to an external recorder to be encoded as ProRes RAW or, after a February 2021 firmware update, as Blackmagic RAW. Line-skipping means less detail, more noise at higher ISOs and greater risk of moiré, 